Spider Silk <laughs> by Caleb Polvey, Jock Sherry, and Peter wow. Chen. What do you think about when you hear the word spider or web? Did you know that spider silk can stretch 140% its length? Or that it's stronger than the man-made material Kevlar? Well, if you did not know, we think this video will interest you. And it will also help you become more aware of the marvel of spider silk. The process of creating silk begins with proteins. These are very similar to the keratin that gives hair its rigidity. They are created from DNA. These proteins are stretched within the spider's silk glands. At first the protein is mixed with water, which is eventually removed as the yet to be formed silk, unspun silk dope, goes through silk glands and then the spinnerets to form a gel-like substance that will harden in the air. Many spiders have a variety of different types of silk that are used for different purposes. The orb weaving spiders have around seven different types of silk. Each silk comes from a different gland and has a unique protein structure which greatly differs from the others to express the different properties of the silk. There are several different examples of spider silk, the major one being major ampullate silk or drag line silk. This provides a rigid frame for the spider web while acting as a walkway for the spider crawl on without being entangled in its own glue. The silk is also used as a lifeline for the spider in case it falls. Flagelliform silk is the silk used to place its sticky droplets on the spiral formation of the silk to capture its prey. While pyrofoam silk is used to attach the corners of the web to a surface that will hold the whole spider web. Aggregate silk, the sticky glue-like droplets that the spider uses to cover its web to catch prey while also providing reinforcement. And minor ampullate silk, which is used as a temporary outline at the beginning of the construction of the web. Lastly, we have acinoform silk, which is used to wrap the prey and also to case the egg. And psyllidiformis silk, which is used for egg casing. Did you know that spiders are not immune to their own glue? Spiders place sticky droplets of silk on their webs which create pathways that they are able to move across without getting trapped. Spiders also have hairs on their legs that are coated with an oily material which allows them to crawl around their webs in almost complete freedom. A mere pound of spider silk could form a strand long enough to stretch around the world's equator. The largest piece of man-made spider silk is found in the Natural Museum of History which took three years to produce. Scientists' best attempts at farming spider silk was through spidroin recombination methods. They attempted to use types of bacteria as well as silkworms which produce similar silk. These methods have failed due to silk's complex hierarchical structure. This is an example of a typical protein structure of a spidroin, the main protein in spider's dragline silk. Spider silk is almost entirely protein. It is long, repetitive, and it features the amino acids, glycinine and alanine. A dragline silk protein could look something like this. Silk that is made by the same spider can have different repeating sequences. Because spider silk is a high performance material, scientists have experimented by putting spider DNA into a goat to try to produce it in larger quantities. The expectation was to make it as part of goat milk, and then to extract the silk from the milk. One goat is able to produce 950 liters of milk each year, so the potential seemed enormous. Spider silk has been tested as a very good conductor due to its chemical makeup and can withstand great atomic force. Spider silk is also an excellent thermal conductor. Spider silk is also able to reflect UV light. This is believed to attract bugs to the web while also signaling to birds to fly around them. Some scientists believe that each spider decorates its web UV reflectors differently. In the past, cobwebs were often used for medical purposes. For example, the Romans believed that by placing a cobweb on an open wound, it would help it heal. Similarly, John Murfield in England believed that cobwebs would clean the dust and dirt inside a wound, which could prevent it from infecting, and it would cleanse the wound. Silk is essential for the spider's survival and reproduction. Every aspect of a spider's life revolves around its ability to produce its silk for drag line, wrapping eggs, and catching prey. Spider webs are used to create bulletproof vests, dissolvable stitches, while also being able to repair ligaments and tendons.